Throughout the installation process of a custom car audio system, there are many times that we need to measure the electrical signal. We may need to connect to an OEM amplifier's output to measure the electrical signal on an RTA so we can understand the frequency response of that factory signal. We also may need to take impedance measurements of a speaker or subwoofer system. Those measurements, or something even as simple as measuring a voltage, requires that we use measurement probes in order to interface between our vehicle's connections and the testing device. Now you've all seen probes like these, these are simple enough, but what if I want to use alligator clips so I don't have to physically hold the connection? Or what if I want to use these smaller needle probes to measure inside of a vehicle harness? We can make some of our own custom probes for this that will be perfect for our car audio applications. Now, a while back, I reviewed this here. This is the JL Audio Max audio measurement system. The Max is a professional grade measurement system that has a five microphone array for taking acoustic measurements. But this also has the ability to take electrical measurements, the type of measurements that we need the test probes for. So in this video, I'm going to be focused on making probes that are specific for this device, and I'll be using some of JL Audio's directions along the way. But even if you don't have the Max and you're using something as basic as a multimeter, this video is going to be helpful for you as we come up with better car audio specific test probes than just this traditional style. So of course, before we can get started building our test probes, we need a selection of some different items here in order to build them. And to make things easier for you guys, I have a full list of everything that I'm using here down in the video description. First off, we have these shielded banana plug style connections, and we're going to have the male style here along with the female style. So I've got the male one in my left hand here and the female one in my right hand. And the advantage of these being shielded is we don't have to worry about anything shorting out when these are disconnected. For now, the connectors are loose because I need to solder the wire to them. We'll be doing that in a minute here but you can see that these are going to give us a foundation upon which to build our connections. And it's definitely also worth noting that most multimeters have this style of connection. So you can see we can take one of these shielded male ones here and that goes right into our basic multimeter. You can find these in other colors. The most common colors you're gonna see is red and black for obvious reasons. That's going to be your positive and negative connection. Next up, we also have these. These are these alligator style clips. It's going to be nice to make test probes using these connections because these can easily connect onto speaker terminals of any size. And even if we have loose wiring, we could also just clip onto it. Speaking of loose wiring that we can clip onto, that's why I also like to have these. And you can see these came with wires already attached, but this here is a hook style connection. You can see I can press the back side of it here and it has a spring inside. So it's going to hold itself onto a wire that we are working on testing or again, you could potentially also connect this onto a terminal, anything that you could get that little hook around. Next up, we have these piercing probe style connections. I tried to avoid using these because the way these work is we twist this down here. And if you can see, see that needle, it's going to move up as I twist this and tighten this. And the way that would work is you would pierce that into a wire. Now, the reason I don't like using these if I can avoid it is obviously it leaves a little mark in the wire. Theoretically, the needle is small enough that the insulation on the wire will kind of self heal itself, but we all know that that's still going to leave a hole. So these are kind of a last resort style connection to use, but nevertheless, it may be handy to have these in our toolbox. Next up, we have these little needle style connections. Again, a very sharp needle, and not necessarily in this case do I like to use these for piercing the insulation, but, but rather to probe a really small wire harness, it can be very handy to use these. You can see that needle is quite long, so that's something you have to consider. You don't want that exposed part to short out but in comparison to the traditional style probe, you can see that these needles are quite a bit more small, which will allow you to probe harnesses that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Now these next parts are JL Audio specific to the max. If we want to do a high level input measurement, in other words, measuring the output from an amplifier or a radio or another device, and we want to take an electrical measurement, we're going to need some of these XLR probe connections. So I've got some Neutrik connections here. And then we can also use the max for impedance measurement. So in that case, I'm using this TRS style connection, which stands for tip ring sleeve. You can see this plugs in right there like that. 
So we'll need some of those as well. Again, all these items linked down below. The actual wire that I'm gonna be using is from our show sponsor, New Concepts. This is the cord speaker cable line. This wire is oxygen-free copper and they have this in 10, 12, 14, and 16 gauge size. In this case, I'm gonna be using 14 gauge because that insulation size fits best with some of the different connections that I need to make. A quick shout out to New Concepts for being a sponsor of the channel. I do wanna show you guys these real quick too. These are the basic fuse block terminals. I love using these in all of my installs because they are so simple. You can see that we've got two inputs, which is nice because you can daisy chain these together and they come in different configurations. In this case, you have two outputs, whereas in this case, you have three outputs. And even better yet, yes, we could use this on the positive side of our wiring as a fuse block, with any of the different mini ANL style fuses, or we could also use one of these on each of the connections to make this a ground distribution block. You can learn more about the basic distribution blocks from New Concepts down in the video description. Now finally, just to protect the wiring and protect our test probe investment, I'm gonna be using some of this material here. This is TechFlex. This is just a braided PET style sleeving that's going to go over the wire and help protect it. That way, you know, if we're stepping on this wire or if it's being run against a sharp edge of the vehicle, we don't have to worry as much about the actual insulation of the wire being damaged. So to understand where we need to make each of these connections, I just put these templates here just to help myself lay this out and to make it easier for you guys to understand on video. Each channel is things that will be connected together. So what I'm going to do is all of these different styles of test probes that I showed you, these all have a female connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make wires that have a male connection on this end, and that allows me to easily switch out which of the probes I'm using based on my application. So just to reiterate, between this and each of the probes will just be a pressure fit connection male to female. Now between these two male connections, I'm gonna have it be male on each end, and I'll tell you why in a second, I'm going to have the wire be about six feet long. That will give me plenty of length to use in all the different applications that we use these wires. Now the reason that I'm going male on this end here is that way, once we have these probes assembled, let's say I wanted to use the alligator clip as an example, I would just connect that connection there. And then let's say that I wanted to use this connection with something basic like a multimeter, well, that's a female connection. So now I'll have a probe that I can just plug in there and use. On the pieces that I'm using specifically for the Max, I'm gonna turn these into female connections. That way I can go from male to female, obviously, on those, basically turning that into that same style of connector. Each of these connectors needs to have a positive and negative, and actually we're gonna also add an additional ground connection on this that will be an alligator style clip that we could connect to the ground in the vehicle if need be. And I'll do something to note that that's a different wire, that it's a ground wire, maybe use some green tape or green marker, we'll figure that out later, but it's going to be different than this black wire here. For the wire that connects between our female banana plug and the XLR and the TRS connector, I'm gonna be making that wire relatively short just because it doesn't need to be very long. I'm gonna keep all the length in this section here. And actually, I'm glad I laid everything out because now that I think about it, rather than having that ground connection just always connected, because I would want that wire to be long enough to reach from wherever I set the max in the vehicle to a potential ground, rather than having that one abnormally long ground wire and then two shorter wires, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this ground wire connection again that I will put like green tape or something on to signify that it's a ground. I'm just going to make that short just like the other connections. That way this connector here isn't bulky and annoying and we don't always necessarily need to make the ground connection in the vehicle. So that will leave that short unused wire out of the way if we don't need it. And in the meantime, I'll just make one additional long six foot length that I can use just for that ground connection in the event that I do need it. Now, before we start soldering any connections to our actual connectors here, we do wanna verify that they're good and we can do that with a quick continuity test. So if I touch these two leads together, you can hear that beeping. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that there is not some connection between the different parts of our connector here, which there is not there or there. Let's check the tip and the ring. 
no continuity there either. So this connector is good. And we're going to do the same for our XLR connection. Kind of hard to show on camera here, but I'm basically going to tap two of these at a time and just make sure there's no connections in between. So I've cut myself a six foot section of wire here and then I've split it up to two feet. That will give me a four foot total reach from end to end, just in case I need any space between my two connections. And I am now going to start soldering using this solder station set up here. I did a full review of all the different tools that I have on screen right now. In particular, check this out. This is the car audio fabrication soldering station that I make. You guys can get these on my website. Just allows me to easily pull off the solder. And if we were doing a wire to wire connection, you can push them down into the these channels here to hold it in place. So here we have it guys, our first set of test probe wires that we've made. And just because again of our application, we've put that male connector on each end. And you can see I have about two foot from here to here, which will give me four foot of total reach, which will be great for testing out different car audio applications. And then these are obviously closer together because they're going to go to our test device. Now, of course, anytime we do some custom wiring, it's a good idea to test our connection. So I wanna do a quick resistance test on these wires here. And before we test that, let's do a quick test on the genuine fluke test probes that come with this multimeter. So we've got the test probes connected. I'm gonna to touch the two together. You can see we've got 0.2 ohms of resistance. Now let's unplug these factory probes and let's plug in our new ones here. And I can't just touch these two ends together. So I'm going to take some of our alligator clips that we can quickly add on here. I'm gonna connect those two together. And you can see with our new aftermarket test probes, we have 0.1 ohms of resistance. In fact, it's probably even less than 0.1 ohms because right now I'm not even touching it. And look at that, it's going to zero on its own. So the soldering process is pretty much the same regardless of the connectors. You want to first tin the wire. You then want to tin the connections. In this case, we're doing this on the TRS connector. You then want to apply heat to connect the tinned areas together. On these TRS connectors, since the connections are so close to each other, it's a good idea to have some heat shrink on there. Once we've done all that, we can screw the TRS connector together. And then of course, to wrap this up, we need to apply the protective sleeving as needed. All right, another test probe down. This is going to be our TRS connection into the max, which will allow us to do impedance measurements of speakers and subwoofers. I think it's kind of ironic that I'm using the test probes that I just made to double check the test probes that I just made. I just jumpered this connection here just to see what kind of resistance we have through this whole system. So 0.2 ohms. And again, keep in mind that even with the Fluke factory cables, when we measure the resistance between those on the multimeter, we had 0.2 ohms on those as well. So gonna be good to go. The final connections to make are for our XLR probe here. Again, since I'm making this for the Max, I'm gonna use JL Audio's directions for what to connect to each pin. But just to give you guys a breakdown here, the way these work is these twist off, and you're gonna have two different pieces. You have this piece that has the threads that thread into the metal piece. That's going to need to be put over the wire first. And then we have kind of this strain relief piece. This piece, as you screw down, the previous piece onto the metal connection, it's going to tighten around the wire and give a good firm hold on the wire. And then we have our metal piece here, which on the inside, these are the connections that we need to make. So I'm gonna push that direction. You can see this piece falls out. So now we have access to this and I can solder each of the wires as needed. Now, as I mentioned earlier on this connector, we actually have three different wires that need to be connected. There's positive, negative, and then ground in case we need it. So for the ground connection, you can buy green pieces of this plastic, but I had a hard time finding them online and I didn't wanna buy 10 of them just to only use one. So in this case, I just used a little bit of a paint marker there. 
labeled it green, and then put some clear heat shrink over it. That way I'll be able to easily remember that this is the ground connection. Just like on all the other wires, it's a good idea to double check and make sure that each of the wires is connected to the pin that you intended to connect it to and do a bit of a resistance test. Once again, on the three conductors for this wire, I've got 0.1 ohms. Off camera, I also made this test probe set here at the beginning of the video. I showed these hook style connections with this spring terminal and these already had the wires attached, but they were male connections on this end. I switched them to female connections. That way it will correspond with the rest of our connectors here. All of these are female connectors. So when I do need to test things, I can just plug my male into each of these females. Let's do one more final resistance test. I've simply got these hooked together so that we can measure the resistance through all these wires. And again, 0.1 ohm. So now you know, you can definitely make yourself some of your own custom probes that are perfect for car audio applications or even specific devices that we use to measure in car audio. In some of the upcoming videos, I plan to show you guys some really cool tests that we can do with the JL Audio Max in order to measure the true performance of our car audio system. If you're new here and you wanna make sure you can catch those future videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Next time you need car audio wiring or power distribution parts, definitely be sure to check out show sponsor New Concepts. You can learn more at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.